Hey everybody, so today I'd kind of like to show you this uh, Olin's Road and Track strut for the uh, BMW F8X cars, so that's the M2, M3, M4, and uh, I wanted to take it apart and show you how this thing goes together. Uh, you know, I did a video before about uh, Bilstein struts and how those come apart and what's inside, and so I thought it might be fun to take a look at this Olin's. One thing to notice right off the bat is that this is an inverted strut design. So that means, you know, this big part protruding out the top is not the slim piston shaft that you see on a conventional damper, but rather this is the body of the damper itself. And what that means is the actual piston shaft for this damper is hidden inside the strut body along with the bump stop. Now, if you're wondering to yourself, you know, why would you want to disassemble the strut assembly? Well, to be quite honest, there's not really a good reason to, unless you're uh, trying to change uh, the bump stop out. But anyhow, I like taking things apart, so let's go ahead and take a look inside. Okay, so we have the damper mounted up in my uh, vise here, and what we're doing is we're looking at the bottom adjustment mechanism, and you know, aside from this little clicky uh, knob you see here, we can also see that the lower portion of it uh, has a uh, a socket cut out. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a 17 millimeter deep socket and we're just going to loosen that and these things you know they're not on very tight so it, it just took a very very light pressure and then you can just unscrew this part. So let's take a little bit of look at this uh, adjustment mechanism and uh, inside you can see that it's just a little hex in fact it's a three millimeter hex and what that three millimeter hex does is it slots into the uh, adjustment screw in the uh, piston shaft and uh, you know it just you know turns a little uh, screw to adjust the uh, the needle valve inside um, one nice thing about this is you know it's spring loaded so you can see I'm pulling the wheel back and then releasing it and what that does is that ensures that this little three millimeter hex is making full contact with that screw uh, at all times Additionally, um, what this also means for this piece is, you know, if this gets damaged or whatever, uh, it's very easily replaceable, right? You just buy a new one and just screw it on. All right, next you can see that there is another uh, nut holding this uh, shaft to the strut body. And once again, that is also a 17 millimeter. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my 17 millimeter and unscrew that as well. Once this 17 millimeter jam nut is off, now all that's holding the uh, uh, damper piston shaft to the strut itself is the fact that the shaft is threaded into the strut body. So you can go ahead and take a, uh, a 3 8 uh, flathead screwdriver or you know uh, a 10 millimeter metric one and use that to screw this clockwise to push that uh, piston shaft into the damper body. Once the shaft has been screwed in all the way, you can pull the damper assembly out of the strut body. So here is what is inside that strut body. As you can see, it's not too much. You have, you know, this little bump stop over here and, and then, you know, right the damper piston shaft itself, um, which you'll also note is, you know, not very large. And uh, part of the reason probably why they, they do this inverted design as well is because, well, you know, since they don't need a large piston shaft to uh, uh, carry the lateral forces they can get away with using a smaller one and that lowers gas forces and if you see my other videos you know that those gas forces well you know they lead to worse ride quality and uh, delaying when the damper actually starts to act as a damper but anyhow this uh, this bump stop you can see it's uh, conically shaped and even inside on that uh, first lip this upper portion it's also conically shaped on the inside so you know this is obviously a progressive bump stop and it is 25 millimeters in thickness um, one of the interesting things about this uh, damper body itself is it is really long. Uh, you know, I was able to go to Fat Cat Motorsports where they had a Bilstein uh, uh, damper uh, body, which also uses an inverted design just like the Olin's. And uh, both of them were for the F8X series of cars, but the Bilstein's damper body was like 30 millimeters shorter. And uh, I think probably the reason why that is is uh, because Olin's is using such a short bump stop. So, you know, they're moving this damper body closer to the bump stop to maintain the amount of travel they want before bump stop engagement versus Bilstein, you know, they use a shorter damper body, but a longer bump stop. And uh, this bump stop, which uh, is a Bilstein internal one from like B8 and B14, um, this guy's 40 millimeters. So you can obviously see like, you know, sure, you can either make a longer bump stop 
or you can make a longer damper body to get where you want this to engage, you know, as the uh, damper and uh, strut assembly is going through its stroke. So that's that. Let's go ahead and put this guy back together. So we're going to start by putting the damper body uh, back into the strut, uh, strut body. But before you do that, um, you may want to use that three millimeter hex or you know just the adjusting uh, mechanism itself to set this to just about full stiff. And the reason why is when you set it to full stiff, um, you've basically hydro locked it inside so you, the shaft doesn't really want to move uh, because well there's like really no path for the oil to, to move. And what that does is it gives the damper body a really good hold on the shaft so that um, you can just kind of screw this together to get this out the other end instead of having to use a screwdriver here. But anyhow, let's go ahead and uh, reinsert this guy. I'm going to get up, make sure all this grease goes inside the lip. Next, we can go ahead and use that uh, 3 8 uh, uh, flathead screwdriver or 10 millimeter screwdriver. Or, you know, if you've uh, set this to full stiff, you can kind of just turn the damper body itself to screw the uh, piston shaft into the strut body. And when this gets to the very end, you'll probably want to take that 3 8 or 10 millimeter screwdriver and, you know, just, just snug it up a bit. It doesn't have to be super tight though. Next, we'll take the 17 millimeter jam nut and get that on there. And once that's all the way down, go ahead and take your torque wrench with that 17 millimeter and torque it to 30 newton meters or 22 foot pounds. Next, we can take the adjustment mechanism and uh, screw that on top. And once that's all the way snug, we'll go ahead and uh, take our torque wrench with 17 millimeter and we'll torque this to 10 newton meters or seven and a half foot pounds. It's really not much. So there you have it. That's a quick peek inside the Olin's Road and Track strut for the BMW F8X series. Uh, you know, if you have a different BMW series like an F2X or F3X, it's going to be the same. And in fact, it wouldn't surprise me if the Olin's is using the exact same uh, strut body as well as uh, damper tube body and just have, you know, slightly different uh, uh, valving inside with the shim stack on their pistons and the reason why I say that is well you know we know that the where the knuckle clamps is this aluminum collar here and the difference between an F2X F3X front strut and the F8X is the uh, diameter of this right 57 versus 62 millimeters if I'm remembering off the top of my head correctly so by just you know kind of swapping uh, this collar here well you know you can make up the difference and uh, yeah, then install it. And we also know that the top here on the uh, Olin's is an M12, which once again is the same as a F2X, F3X, and they're using like a nut with a extra shimming on it uh, for the 14 millimeter or M14 thread top mount of the F8X cars. So yeah, you know, that, that would be an easy way to uh, keep commonality and lower costs across these. But anyhow, you know, we've taken a look inside, we've seen, you know, the short bump stop uh, and, you know, really not much else to it because, you know, it's a pretty simple assembly.